Hello and welcome to this video, I'm going to go through the solutions to the questions on piecewise functions. If you haven't already tried the questions but want to do so, you can find a link to them in this video's description. So let's start with this first function here. The first part of it says f of x equals 2x minus 3, and this is for the values of x from 0 to 3. So let's just plot this graph. We know it has an intercept at negative 3, so we start with 0, negative 3, and then we have a gradient of 2, so you can probably spot visually the next point is 1, negative 1, and then 2, 1, and 3, 3, and we're going to stop here because we're going from 0 to 3, so we connect these up with a nice straight line like this. Now we move on to the next part of the function, so we've got 6 minus x this time, and x is going from 3 to 7. You might be better off this time substituting in the value, so let's start with 3. If you substitute in 3, you get 6 take 3, which is 3, and we already have that point, 3, 3. Now we'll substitute in 4, so 6 take away 4 is 2, so we get the point 4, 2. Now substitute in 5, 6 take 5 is 1, so we get the point 5, 1. And then substitute in 6, 6 take 6 is 0, so we get the point 6, 0. And finally, the last point of this part is 6 take away 7, which is negative 1, so 7, negative 1. Now connect these up with a straight line, and we move on to the final part. In this part, f of x equals negative 1, and it's for the x values from 7 to 10. So we just need a horizontal line going through negative 1. So we want 8, negative 1, 9, negative 1, and 10, negative 1. And we connect that up, and our function is completed. Now for this function, we'll start with 5 minus 0.5x. And this is for the x values from 0 to 4. So it has an intercept of 5, so we'll start at 0, 5. And this time, we've got a gradient of negative a half. Now if you prefer you can substitute in points here, but a gradient of negative a half means we're going to go through the point 1, 4.5, 2, 4, 3, 3.5, and 4, 3. We finish at 4 so we can connect these up with a straight line like this and move on to the next part. Now we've got negative 4x plus 19. This time I will substitute in value, so we'll start with 4. Negative 4 times 4 is negative 16, then add 19 gives you 3, and that's the point we've already got, 4, 3. Now we'll do 5, so negative 4 times 5 is negative 20, and if you add 19 to that you get negative 1. So we need the point 5, negative 1, which goes here. And we'll do 6 as well, so negative 4 times 6 is negative 24, and add 19 to that, and we'll end up with a point 6, negative 5. That's the final value for that interval, so we'll connect these up. And now we'll move on to the final part, which is x take away 11, and this is for the x values from 6 to 10. So we've already got the point for 6, 6 take away 11 was negative 5, so you can see 6, negative 5 is the first point. Now we'll move on to 7, 7 take away 11 is negative 4, so we get 7, negative 4. 8 take away 11 is negative 3, so 8, negative 3. 9 take away 11, negative 2, and then 10 take away 11, negative 1. So you connect these up, and there's our function. This next function starts with x squared, and it's the x values from 0 to 2. So we'll start with 0, 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, and 2 squared is 4. And that's the end of that part, so we'll join those up with a nice curve. And then move on to the next part, so we've got 6 take away x for the x values from 2 to 4. So 6 take away 2, that's 4, we've already got that point, 2, 4. 6 take away 3, 6 take away 3 is 3, so we need the point 3, 3. 6 take away 4 is 2, so we need the point 4, 2. And that's the end of that short section there. And the final section is 4 take away 0.5x for the x values from 4 to 10. So we've already got the point for 4, so let's start with 5. 4 take away 0.5 times 5, well that's going to give you 1.5. 4 take away 0.5 lots of 6, that's going to give you 1, so 6, 1. Then 4 take away 0.5 lots of 7, that's going to give you 0.5. 4 take away 0.5 times 8 will give you 0. And 4 take away 0.5 times 9 is negative 0.5. And the final point, 4 take away 0.5 times 10 gives you negative 1. So we join these up, and there's our completed function. For this function, we start with 5 minus x squared for x values from 0 to 3. So let's start with 0. 5 take away 0 squared, that's just 5, so we get the point 0, 5 up here. And then we'll do 1, so 5 take away 1 squared is 4. And then 2, 5 take away 2 squared gives you 1. And then 3, 5 take away 3 squared gives you negative 4. And we join them up with a nice smooth curve like this, and move on to the next section. So now we've got 3x take away 13 for x values from 3 to 6. We've already got the point for 3, so let's move on to 4. 
If we do three times four, you get 12. Take away 13 is negative one. So four goes with negative one. And then for five, three times five is 15. Take away 13 is two. So we get five, two. And the final one for this section, six, six times three is 18. Take away 13 is five. So we get the point six, five. And we can join those up. That's a straight line. And the final section for this function is where it equals five. So a horizontal line going through five on the y-axis, but only for values from six to 10. So we want this one, seven, five, eight, five, nine, five, and 10, five. So we complete the function like this. This function starts with x plus two, and it's for x values from zero to three. We know this one has an intercept at two then, and it's got a gradient of one. So you can probably see quite easily the next points are one, three, two, four, and three, five. And this one stops at three. So we've done that part of the function. We'll move on to the next one. Now this is a quadratic, x squared take away 12x plus 32, and we've got quite a few values here. We've got from three to eight. Now if we start with three, we'll just check this works. So three squared take away 12, lots of three, add 32, does indeed give you five. Then move on to four, so four squared, take away 12, lots of four, plus 32 to that, and you'll get the value zero, so we get four zero. Then move on to five, so five squared, take away 12, lots of five, plus 32, that's going to give you negative three, so five, negative three. Then we'll do six, six squared, take away 12 sixes plus 32. That gives you negative four. Then we'll do seven, seven squared, take away 12 sevens plus 32, gives you negative three again. And then finally for this section, eight, eight squared, take away 12 lots of eight plus 32, gives you zero. So we end up with this curve. So we'll join that up with a smooth curve line like this and move on to the final section. So this section is 12 take away 3 over 2x, and it's for x values from 8 to 10. So we'll substitute in 8, you do 12 take away 3 over 2 times 8, and that gives you 0. So we've already got that point. Then we'll do 9, so 12 take away 3 over 2 times 9, and that gives you negative 1.5. And the final point, 10, 12 take away 3 over 2 times 10, gives you negative 3. So our final point, 10, negative 3 there, and we connect those up with a straight line. So that's our finished function. In this question, we've been given a graph and we need to try and find out which function it represents. You can see it's in three parts. So let's look at the first part here. Here, the function just takes the value negative two. So we can write f of x equals negative two. And you can see if you look at the x-axis, it starts at zero and it ends at two. So we can fill in the values here, zero to two. Now let's move on to the next part. This is a straight line graph. So we're going to need to find out the gradient and the intercept. We can find the gradient by drawing a gradient triangle here. You can see the gradient of this one is just one, so it's going to be y equals one x. And then we need the intercept. Now you can actually see from the graph here, if you extend it, the intercept will be at negative four, so it's x take four. If you look at the x-axis here, you can see it started at two and finished at five, so we'll put in those values two and five. And now onto the final piece, so this part here. Again, a straight line graph, so let's draw a gradient triangle. And this one has a gradient of negative two, so it's of the form y equals negative 2x plus c. This time we're not going to try and extend the graph to find the intercept. Let's pick a point. I'll go for this one up here. 5, 1, because those points are both positive, it should be easy to do. Let's replace x with 5 and y with 1. So 1 equals negative 2 times 5 plus c. Negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. And then if we add 10 to both sides, we end up with c equals 11. So the final part will be negative 2x plus 11. And you can see from the graph, this is for x values from five to seven. So it's from five to seven and we're finished. For this question, we also have a graph and we need to write down its function. Let's start with the first part of the graph here. This is a straight line. So we need the gradient and the intercept. You can draw a gradient triangle like this and we can see the gradient here is three. So it will be three x. And now for the intercept, fortunately for this one, we can see the y intercept it's here at negative four. So the graph is 3x take away 4. And if you look carefully at the graph, you can see it goes from x values from 0 to 2. Now we move on to the next section. It's also a straight line, this time with a negative gradient. Let's draw a gradient triangle again. And you can see the gradient of this one is negative 2. So it's going to be y equals negative 2x plus c. Now this time we can't see the intercept so clearly, so let's pick a point and substitute that in. I'll go for this one here, 2, 2, since the values are both positive. So we have two equals negative two times two plus C. Negative two times two is negative four. And then if we add four to both sides, we'll get C equals six. 
So this graph is negative 2x plus 6. And if you look at the graph, you can see the x values go between 2 and 4. So 2 and 4. Now we move on to the final section of the graph. This is just a horizontal line here. And you can see the y coordinates of all of those points are negative 2. So it equals negative 2. And this is for the x values from 4 to 6. We're going to start this question by looking at the middle section of the graph. That's this curve bit here. We're told its function is x minus c, x minus d. Since the graph crosses the x-axis at these two points, 3, 0 and 5, 0, we can deduce that the values of c and d must be 3 and 5. So the brackets need to be x minus 3 and x minus 5. But which way around would they go? Well, we're also told in the question that c is less than d. Therefore, c must be 3 and d must be 5. So c equals 3 and d equals 5. Now we're told the function takes these values when x is in between 2 and 6. So the endpoints of this curve must be when x equals 2 and when x equals 6. If we take this part of the function and replace x with 6, we get 6 take away 3 and 6 take away 5. 6 take away 3 is 3 and 6 take away 5 is 1, so this is just 3 times 1, which is 3. So the coordinates of the furthest right part of this part of the function are 6, 3. We can do the same with 2. So take the function and replace x with 2. 2 take away 3 and then 2 take away 5 gives you negative 1 times negative 3, which is also positive 3. So the point on the leftmost part of this part of the function has coordinates 2, 3. Since these points both have the y coordinate 3, if we draw a horizontal line across like this, we can see they would hit the axis at 3. Now this helps us with the final part of the function, the part of the function where it says it equals e, for values between 6 and 10. That's this final part here. It should be quite easy to now deduce that e must be the value 3. We've now only got two values to find, they're a and b. So if we look at the first part of the function, it equals ax plus b, for x values between 0 and 2. Now we're told some other information in the question. We're told that the point p is where the function intersects the y-axis, and the line y equals p is tangential to the curved part of the graph. This means if we draw a horizontal line through p, it would just touch the quadratic part of the graph here. So it would be really useful if we can work out the coordinates of this point here, so that we can get the coordinates of p. Now this is the vertex of the quadratic part of the graph. You should know that the x-coordinate of the vertex will always be halfway in between the roots. So the roots are 3 and 5, so the x-coordinate of the vertex is in between those, which is 4. So if we take the function again, x minus 3x minus 5, and replace x with 4, we get 4 take 3 and 4 take 5, which is 1 times negative 1, which is 1. So the vertex is when x equals 4 and y equals negative 1. So it has coordinates 4, negative 1. Since it's on the same horizontal line as p, p must have the coordinate 0, negative 1. If we now look at the first part of the graph, which is this straight line here, we just need to work out the equation of it. Since we know the coordinates at either end, we can do this. Let's draw a gradient triangle like this. The horizontal distance here goes from 0 to 2, so that's a distance of 2. And the vertical distance is from negative 1 to 3, so that's a distance of 4. So the gradient of this one's 4 divided by 2, which is 2. So it must be y equals 2x plus c. Now we also know the intercept because we've got the point p, so the intercept is at negative 1, so it's y equals 2x take away 1. Now you can compare this to ax plus b and see that a must be 2 and b must be negative 1. And now we've completed the question. For the first part of this question we need to draw the graph f of x. So the first part is sine x when x is in between 0 and 180. So the normal sine curve looks like this from 0 to 360, but we only want the part from 0 to 180, so let's lose the second half. Then the function takes the value 0 from 180 to 270, so we just need a horizontal line at 0 from 180 to 270, and it finishes with cos of x for 270 to 360. So let's draw the whole normal cos graph, it would look something like this, but we only want the part from 270 to 360, so let's remove the first part and your finished function should look something like this. For the second part of the question, we're told that k is in between 0 and 1, and we need to find out how many solutions there are to f of x equals k. This means we just need to draw a horizontal line at the value of k and see how many times it crosses our function. Since k is in between 0 and 1, we know it will be in the top section of this graph, 
no matter where you draw it, it's going to hit the graph one, two, three times. Remember, it can't be equal to zero and it can't be equal to one, so it must cross this graph three times. So the answer is three. For the first part of this question, we need to work out the value of a. Notice that a is the value the function takes in the middle part here between 10 and 15. If you look at the graph, you can see the middle section is a horizontal line, so we just need to find out what the y value of these points is. If we look at this particular point here, this is the last point of the first section of the graph, and also the first point of the second section of the graph. So if we use the first section of the graph to find this, so the first section is 2x minus 5 for x values between 0 and 10, and since it's the last point in this section, we just need to substitute in the point 10. So we do two lots of 10 take away 5, that's just 15, so this point must have a y value of 15, so a is 15. For the second part of this question, we need to find out how many times bigger the area of the trapezium is than the triangle. Let's look at the triangle first, this one here. In order to work out the area of this triangle, we're going to need to find the coordinates of some points, specifically this one here, and this one here. We can work out the lower one of those points just by looking at the function. The function is 2x minus 5 for this section, so it has an intercept of negative 5. So the coordinates of the first one are 0, negative 5. To do the second one, we take the function and find out when it takes the value 0. So 2x minus 5 equals 0, add 5 to both sides and you get 2x equals 5, and then divide by 2, you get x equals 2.5. So this point here has coordinates 2.50. We can now see the height of this triangle is 5, and the base, which is actually at the top, but it is the base, is 2.5. Now we can use the formula for area of a triangle, area equals 1 half, times the base, times the height, and if you do this on your calculator, you'll get 6.25 square units. We now need to turn our attention to the trapezium. If we look at the second part of the function, it takes the value a, but importantly, for x values between 10 and 15. So if you look at this part on the graph, it's the horizontal line at the top. The first point there has x value 10, and the last point has x value 15. So the horizontal distance there must be 5. We now need to find the coordinates of this point down here, where the final section of the graph crosses the x-axis. The function takes the values of 30 minus x. So if we find out when 30 minus x equals 0, we just get x equals 30. So the coordinates of this point are 30, 0. We can now see the horizontal distance between the two bottom corner points of the trapezium. We do 30 take away 2.5, and we can find that distance is 27.5. Now we have everything we need to be able to find the area of the trapezium. The formula is the area equals 1 half. We times this by a plus b, which are the two parallel sides, so 5 plus 27.5. And then we multiply this by the perpendicular height, which we found out earlier the height of this trapezium is 15. If you type this into your calculator, you get 243.75 units squared. The question said how many times bigger is the area of the trapezium than the triangle? So we just need to divide the area of the trapezium by the area of the triangle, and you get the answer 39. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful, check out the one I think you should watch next, and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.